NUS undergrad Colin Chan is part of a growing group of young Asians trying to combine fun and finance. It was very interesting because on one hand, you know, I like to play games. And on the same time, at the other hand, you know, I can still earn a passive income from it. GameFi is a combination of gaming and finance. The idea is this. Play virtual blockchain-based games, and as you progress, earn cryptocurrencies or tokens in the form of NFTs, which can then be cashed out. One, two hours a day, and I can still earn at least about a couple of hundreds <laughs> a month, in fact, because you can buy power-ups, you can assemble your team who can play on behalf of you. It's estimated that such games attracted more than 1.2 million daily unique users in March alone, more than 2,000% from a year ago. Insiders say it's a natural evolution of the gaming industry. I actually think this is just the next step where, we, where the world is saying, how about if we added a, a sophisticated finance layer to games, right? What if items are interoperable? What if tokens can be cashed out? What if uh, people not only gain uh, pleasure from playing the game as a utility, but also financial or economic utility? But is it as lucrative as it seems? In many games, you have to pay for tokens to begin playing, setting you back up to hundreds of dollars before you even begin. That means you'll first have to make enough money to recuperate that investment. And that's unlikely, unless you dedicate hours and hours in a day to play. You need to actually know what you do, uh, what you're doing, to make sure you derive some sort of meaningful income from it. The risks of play-to-earn gaming were thrown into the spotlight earlier this year, when users of the popular game Axie Infinity suffered a hack of more than 600 million US dollars. The Axie network breach is what happened where hackers gained access to a victim's private keys, and that remains a really important issue and vulnerability in the ecosystem. Our research has shown that even in the first three months of this year alone, hackers have stolen $1.3 billion of cryptocurrency, and 97% of that is from DeFi platforms. So this is not, this Axie hack was not standing alone in a vacuum. It was the biggest hack of the year, but it happens in a variety of forms all the time. And just like with the wider crypto market, there can be significant volatility in the price of tokens with no guarantee to players. Some critics have even likened it to a Ponzi scheme where money from new players is used to help earlier investors cash out. A lot of the games basically start high as soon as the hype goes. Uh, uh, like as long as the hype goes, it's all great. As soon as, like as long as people keep buying NFTs for these games, but uh, as soon as the NFT purchases stop, stop, the game token basically goes uh, all the way down. Right. With no regulation as yet, there's nowhere to turn if a game falls. But others say that's unfair criticism as the industry is still in its very early stages. We're seeing that people are learning from their mistakes. And I think a lot of the issues that we saw in the past few months and year and in the past year have been pretty a natural consequence of a fast growing new tech industry. I think people are working really hard to figure out what, what is the regulatory burden here? What do we need to do? How do we remain compliant? What are the rules? Still, advocates believe this could be the next big thing. Investors have poured more than 2.5 billion US dollars into the space in the first quarter of this year. Compare that to $4 billion for the whole of 2021. The idea is that play-to-earn gaming could be a gateway to onboard people to Web 3.0. Access to crypto and to uh, decentralized finance uh, is limited to you know the top five percent of the world, 
right? The second thing we realized is 90% of crypto people are, are male, right? And hence the term crypto bros, right? That, that was a very popular term being used. And uh, more importantly, the, the sophistication needed to set up your own wallet, to understand what an NFT is, to understand what a token does, is so high that you know, your, your, your regular person would just tune out, right? What if we could use games, a games platform, as a means to onboard the next billion users into what we think is the next disruptive wave, technological wave. We don't fully understand all the use cases for Web3, but it, 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 it resonates with me the same way that you know, the internet revolution happened uh, 20 years ago. So while not everyone will be able to get rich from playing these games, they can still provide a fun experience with potential monetary incentives. Players have to make sure they do their own research before deciding to spend time and money on the endeavour. Understand a little bit of what you're trying to do uh, before just diving straight in, right? And you can avoid you know, obvious uh, scams, or obviously, obvious security loopholes. The second thing is <clears throat> try not to be too bullish, right? Don't take all your life savings and like just like go in there and buy something. It is a very interesting new space, very lucrative on um, first glance, but as what um, crypto people would say, DYOR, do your own research and make sure that the fundamentals um, can support you in the long run.